In this section, we're going to continue improving our development workflow, this time looking at some slightly more advanced tasks. We'll cover using Require.js, running unit tests with Jasmine and Karma, and seeing coverage reports. Developing with Require.js. In this video, we're going to look at Require.js. Require.js is a JavaScript module loader for the browser. We can use it to keep all of our scripts nicely modular and organized. During development, we can load all of our modules asynchronously using Require.js, but for a distribution build, we want to use the RJS optimizer to produce a minified package containing all of our modules and the loader concatenated together. So first of all, let's install the official Grunt Contrib Require.js module. We'll need a couple of example files to get Require up and running. We'll need a module and an entry point for our application at a minimum. So let's create those next. First of all, let's create a new folder inside the JS folder. We can call it modules. And inside this new folder, we can create a new file called logger. So this is going to be our require.js module. All require.js modules should be wrapped in a function passed to a globally available method called define. Inside this function is the code that makes up the module. Let's just add something simple for this example. So in this case, we return an object that exposes a log method. This method takes some input and then just logs it to the console. Now let's add a main entry point to our application. This can go into the JS folder and we'll just call this file main. So this time we're not defining a module. We don't need to use the define function. This time we're gonna make use of the require function. The require method takes two arguments. The first is an array of the dependencies that we want to load. So in this case, we specify our logger module. The second argument is a callback function that gets invoked. This function actually gets passed all of the modules that we want to use. In this case, we're just using our logger module. And now inside this function, we can make use of the loggers functionality. The RJS optimizer is automatically installed with the require.js grunt plugin. So we want to use that to build a concatenated minified package. There's one thing that we need at this point, and that's an alternative module loader called Almond. So this is a module loader like require.js, which supports AMD modules, but it's much, much smaller than the full version of require.js that we're going to use for development. So let's download the almond.js loader from GitHub. So you can see the URL that this is available from. I'm just going to save it now. So I'm going to save this in the JS folder, but I'm going to put it inside a new directory called vendor, which is where we store third party scripts. So now let's add the configuration for require.js. We're going to want this task to run directly after the uglify task. So let's insert the config after that. So we've added a dist target and now inside this, we can set some options. So the first option that we want to set is the base URL, which tells require.js where all of our script files are. They're all in the JS directory. So we can just set the base URL to JS. Now we need to tell the RJS optimizer the name of the minified concatenated file that we want it to output. And we do that using the out option. And we want to tell require.js to include our main entry point file. So we do that using the include option. And lastly, we want to tell RJS to use almond as the module loader. And we can do that using the name option. So now let's add the new require.js task to our default task. And we're going to add that after the uglify task. So now we just need to update the HTML build configuration. We want to tell it to add our new app.js script file after our package.min.js file. So at this point, we should be able to run a dist build. And let's just open up the console. So we're not seeing the console.log. Let's just go back and see if we can see what's going on. Let's take a look at the index.html page to make sure it's having the app.js file added to it. 
and it doesn't look like it is being added, so that's the problem. And the reason why it's not adding that is because we're still using the dev target that we were using when we looked at this task previously, so let's just update that to dist. And let's just try running that again. And this time we do see our console message, so we know that everything is wired up correctly. So I mentioned earlier that when we do a development build, we don't need to worry about using RJS to concatenate all of our modules together. It's actually easier to debug if we just load all of our modules individually using the full version of require.js. So what we need to do for development builds is to copy the modules and main.js file to the JS directory in the dist folder. So we can use another Grunt plugin to do this, the Grunt Contrib Copy plugin. So first of all, let's just install that quickly. The configuration for the Copy plugin is very simple. We just need to tell it which files we want to copy and where we want to copy them to. So let's add some configuration for this plugin now. We can add this directly before the HTML build task config. This time we call our target dev and we can use the files property now to specify the files that we want to copy. This time we're going to use the files array format. So we're going to want to copy some different files here. First of all, we want to copy the require.js source file itself. There's a version of this file that gets installed with the require.js grunt plugin. So we can copy that from the plugin to our dist folder. So we'll copy this to a vendor directory in the dist.js folder. Now we also want to copy over all of our modules and our main file. So at this point we've only got one module, but in the future we could have loads. So we don't want to have to copy over each file individually. So what we want to do is tell the copy task just to copy all of the files in the JS folder. So we can do that using a second object that gets passed to the files array. And this is actually a file list that we're going to build dynamically. And because we want to build this file list dynamically, we need to set the expand property to true. And now we need to specify the files that we want to copy over. And lastly, we just need to specify the destination. So there's one more thing that we need to do now. We need to update our index.html page so that in dev builds, the path to the require.js source file is used. So let's open up the copy of index.html at the root of our project. And we can hard code in a reference to the require.js file. So the copy task is going to put the require.js file inside a vendor folder in the dist.js folder. And also with require.js, we can use the data main attribute to tell require where our main entry point is, and that's going to get copied over as well. But actually, we only want this during dev builds. We don't want it for our distribution builds because we've already got Almond and our modules concatenated together. So we can use another of the HTML build comments here, and we can strip this script tag out during distribution builds. So now let's try running a development build. We'll just need to update the target in our grunt file. And let's open up the console. So it's saying that it can't find the require.js file. Let's just go back and see if we can see what's going on. So let's just see if all of the files are getting copied over as we expect them to. And it looks like they aren't. And the reason for this actually is just because we need to add the copy task to our default task. And we can add this before the HTML build task. So let's try running that once again. And this time we see the message in the console. So we know that everything is set up and configured. So in this video, we saw how to develop with require.js. We created a basic example module and a main file, and then updated our default grunt task to be able to run either development builds in which we use the original unminified modules and the full version of 
Require.js for easy debugging, or that we can run distribution builds, which use a much smaller module loader and a concatenated set of modules. In the next video, we can look at unit testing from the command line with Jasmine and Karma.